Hello everyone, today my team is going to talk about Birch algorithm. What does Birch mean? Birch is a balanced interactive reducing and closing using hierarchy. So, what are its authors? Tim Sang, Rat Ramakrishnan, and Marion Libni. Um, Birch is an unsupervised data mining algorithm used to perform hierarchical clustering of a particularly large data set and its category is hierarchical clustering. It's an algorithm that groups similar objects into groups called cluster. The endpoint is a set of clusters where each cluster is distinct from each other cluster and the objects within each cluster are broadly similar to each other. So what are its main characteristics. So, its composite is omega n square. Input parameter data set is loaded in memory by building CF3. Large data test handle, yes, is, is correct. Geometry, shelf of cluster produced in almost spherical or convex of unique size. Noise, handle noise effect, effectively. Other handle, Filtering of all layer contained in data set is done less e effectively. Type of data balls, numerical only. Type of model, dynamic or incremental model. The closing phase, clos cluster filter through its format. And running time, comparably more. And data input or sensitivity, yes. And let's continue with Alan. So this is the flowchart of the Birch algorithm. It is actually easier to define the algorithm by its phases, two of which are optional, although recommended. Um, and as you can see, the algorithm only scans the data set once, so its computational complexity is big O of N. Now, talking about the types of data handled by the algorithm, uh, we will find that it only works with numerical or metric data which are the ones that can be visualized in Euclidean space, the distance in a um, Cartesian plane. So the categorical attributes or values are out of the e e equation. Now for the examples, we decided to show the two most important elements, the cluster feature and the cluster feature tree. Um, now in cluster feature, the element right here the value count, the linear sum, and the squared sum are calculated. Now, thanks to the properties of the algorithm, if you have a cluster joined to another C2 cluster, we can simply merge both clusters and apply the same formulas, like right here. We can see that the CF3 is the sum or the joint of CF1 and CF2. Now, for the other example, which is the CF3, uh, we can see that first we have that the data points in one cluster, then the data arrives and check is made whether the size of the cluster does not exceed T. Uh, T is our threshold. Now, if the cluster size grows too big, the cluster is split into two clusters and the points are redistributed like right here we have two new clusters a and b uh, each one with its uh, subclusters and now at each node of the tree the cf tree keeps information about the mean of the cluster and the mean of the sum of squares to compute the size of the clusters efficiently and all of these is the cluster feature which is like the summary the the statistical summary Thank you for your explanation, Alan. So let's continue with the implementation. The implementation of the algorithm is pretty straightforward. Thank you to the SQL library, which already contains the algorithm. Also, we will be using Seaborn and Matoldi for data visualization and NumPy and Pandas for data computations. The data set can be found in Kaggle as Caribou Location Tracking, as you can see here, which contains all the data information. Here, we can see a brief look at the data, which contains the timestamp and also the location of the animal, which is represented by the longitude and the latitude. Then, we are going to define the function that will parse all the valid data 
we'll divide it in years and we'll train and feed the model. As you can see here, we are going to use these three parameters, branching factor, number of clusters, and the threshold. We are going to create plots and then save them using the new created clusters made by the algorithm. Right now, we are going to do a light demonstration to show you how fast this algorithm works and creates the graphs. And as you can see here, it already has started to create the images in a very, very fast way. And as you can see here, the images are created at this exact moment. And yeah, that's it. Thank you, and we are going to continue with Monse. Thank you, Swallow. Now we're going to be talking a little bit about the disadvantages and advantages of the Birch algorithm. Well, first, something that we can say about the Birch algorithm. An advantage over the previous clustering algorithms that existed before this one is that this works with locality, which means that each clustering decision is made without scanning all data points in currently existing clusters. It exploits the observation that the data space is not usually uniformly occupied and not every data point is equally important. It makes full use of available memory to derive the finest possible subclusters while minimizing input output costs. It is also an incremental method that does not require the whole data set in advance. But here's where the disadvantage comes. It only works with metric data points. So that's its major drawback. It can only process metric attributes. A metric attribute is any attribute whose values can be represented in Euclidean space. So that meaning no categorical data can be used in this algorithm. As a conclusion, previous clustering algorithms perform less effectively over very large databases and did not adequately consider the case wherein a data set was too large to fit in main memory. As a result, there was a lot of overhead maintaining high clustering quality while minimizing the cost of additional input-output operations. Furthermore, most of Birch's predecessors inspect all data points or all currently existing clusters equally for each clustering decision and do not perform heuristic weighting based on the distance between these data points.